Hi, welcome to this video on foot of wave analysis, including the Tafel equation and the Battle of Ulmer equation. This video came about because of direct requests through um, the YouTube channel. There were some comments underneath and um, people said, look, can you do foot of wave analysis? And actually, there's like anything, there are lots of levels to this. So we thought we'd start at the basics, which is really the Tafel equation and move to the Battle of Ulmer equation. But it's probably worth saying that both of these are really fall into the sort of general category of foot of wave analysis and i will also define what i mean by foot of wave analysis um as well um if you can if you like the content of the video if you like it it does help it really kind of makes us know that we're doing something that's useful for the community uh, and also um if you can subscribe that's also useful as well because it does let us know again that actually what we're doing is useful and it does help um i want to say motivate basically to make these videos so thanks very much if you can do that um, it's probably worth saying that this video is complementary to a video that we did on cyclic voltammetry. Um, so in cyclic voltammetry, we did a, you know, a video, as I say, on um, cyclic voltammetry. And in that, we showed a simulation, which was the oxidation of uh, ferrocyanide um, to ferricyanide. And in that, we said there's several regions in a voltammogram. And one of them I was kind of describing as the foothills. Which was a good term because actually I realize now that you know there's a more formal term for this, which is foot of wave analysis. So we have this kind of voltammogram, which you could describe as a sort of wave. Um, and at the foot of it, um, there was a region that we called um, in that video we were calling it the kinetic region, and we said it was well defined by the Tafel equation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the Tafel equation and the Butler-Volmer equation. It's probably worth saying that I am in this video, I'm not going to derive the either equation. I'm going to assume that they are correct. Now, the derivations um, can be another video. If you leave, for example, comments on the YouTube um, video, um, we can essentially kick into um, doing a video um, on that as well. So I'm going to today not derive them, but more talk about them and also talk about the implications of um, those equations. So as I say, when we're presenting um, at videos, you'll find lots of videos um, on various channels like YouTube. We're always, I would say, coming from it from a slightly different perspective, which is strict electroanalytical chemistry with the idea of sensors and biosensors. So it's a slightly different perspective, whereas some people talk about this kind of material um, from an electrolysis perspective or a photoelectrochemistry perspective, fuel cell perspective. We're talking to it from a electroanalytical perspective. Um, because we do sensors and biosensors. So we are talking about things like the oxidation of ferrocyanide to ferricyanide. And what the Tafel equation does for us is says, look, the current at that foot of that voltammogram um, is proportional to the over potential. Now, the over potential sort of says this, look, that the redox of ferrocyanide to ferricyanide and ferricyanide to ferrocyanide, it has a standard potential. And the over potential says, how much more extra volts above or below that standard potential am I applying? So the standard potential kind of, um, you could also call it equilibrium potential, just defines where ferrocyanide and ferricyanide are kind of in balance with one another. And then the over potential says, right, I'm going to shift that balance. How much extra voltage am I applying? <laughs> Simply, current is proportional to voltage or over potential, sorry, potential applied or over potential. Um, the more potential I apply, the more current I have. Now, this is a simplified version of the Battle of Ulmer equation, um, and we'll show the full Battle of Ulmer equation in a minute. But in the simplified version here, it actually also says, look, current is proportional to over potential. So these um, two equations are actually, I want to say the same, or you know, at least we could describe them as being similar. They have different um, origins. The Tafel equation came about when actually people were doing practical electrochemical experiments and they were noting this um, link between um, current and potential applied and Tafel counter came up with like an empirical equation that defined that relationship. And then later on from the Battle of Ulmer, they actually said they knew that there was this relationship, but they actually started off with theory and derived the equation, you know, so it's sort of steeped in a theoretical model, whereas the Tafel equation is purely a kind of empirical equation that says, how do I come up with an equation that um, characterizes uh, my current in that kinetic region? Different origins, but they come to the same place. 
Um, and in fact, you can move between these two equations if you um, say that the rate constant in the Tafel equation is equal to the um, exchange current density, I0, over NFC. N is number of electrons, F is Faraday's constant, and C is concentration. And so if you replace K in the Tafel equation with um, K here, then you basically um, come to the um, butler volmer simplified version that I have um, written here. Um, I'm actually going to plot out the butler volmer equation um, here. So I sort of do, I have a version which I call the relative simplified version. And if we plot that out using some constants, um, Faraday's constant is 96,485, 96,485. Um, Coulombs per mole, Ryberg gas constant, um, temperature, which is 25 degrees or 298, deg um, 298 Kelvin. And alpha, alpha is interesting. It's a kind of like a symmetry saying, um, is my redox reaction biased towards the oxidation or the reduction? Or is it balanced between the two? So when I say alpha is 0 0.5, it kind of says that it's balanced between the two. And anyway, we can plot that out and we get something that actually looks like that um when i showed the voltammogram earlier on i said that current was proportional to voltage you can kind of see that um relationship um in the plot of the butler volmer equation um there um now this is um one version of the full butler volmer equation it actually has sort of two parts to it now now it actually has the anodic current and the cathodic current um and we, we we can plot that out again and we get something that's um it shows you how the current changes um when i apply a positive over potential so this is like an oxidation or an anodic current and it also shows you the current when you apply a over potential that's um less than um zero and we get a kind of cathodic um current here or a reduction current here so that's how the full butler um a Volmer equation actually looks but in fact you can model it um, or you can make it here we've just taken a simplified version we're just considering the anodic um, contribution so what this says is that when I'm applying um, over potentials that are, that are approximately and I'm just going to move myself um, slightly out of the way here when I'm applying potentials that are approximately um, 0 0.1 or or above you can see that the simplified butler volmer equation um, really tracks well with the full butler volmer equation um and at the same uh, yeah so it, it tracks um really quite well and the same is here that if i if i just consider the cathodic current and use a simplified butler volmer equation it tracks really well especially at um voltages of sort of minus 0 0.1 volts and less so the full butler volmer equation essentially describes the relationship between current and over potential throughout um, this potential region whereas the anodic um, the simplified version just works well in this kind of anodic region here and the simplified cathodic version of the butler volmer works really well in this region here um, so this particular orange line is is plotted with this version of the butler volmer equation, the sort of a truncated or simplified version. Um, the full grey line is the full butler volmer equation, and then the blue line, which is just which tracks really well in the anodic region here, is also a simplified version um, as well. Now what this says is that um, at potentials of something like 0.1 um, volts or an over potential 0 0.1 volts you can see that actually you can just use the simplified version um, and if you're applying um, over potentials of something like minus 0 0.1 volts you can again just use the um, simplified version but in the cathodic region so um, butler volmer equation is very similar um, to the Tafel equations um, in fact you know the but um, Butler comes from theory, whereas Tafel comes from observation. And in fact, you don't necessarily need the full Butler Volmer equation when um, looking at over potentials that are greater than 0 0.1 or let's say um, less than 0. Point, minus, I should say, minus 0 0.1 um, volts down here.
So if I was to sort of recap this, I know it's sort of saying the same thing, but in a different way, but um, this is the full butler volmer equation, which is described um, by this, um, not described, but I've plotted it out here. Um, in the region of um, where the overpotential is greater than 0.1 volts, you can see a really good fit with a sort of simplified version of the butler volmer equation. So that's a kind of a nodic current um, butler volmer and then if we are looking at the region which is less than 0. Point, um, minus 0. 0.1 volts, um, we can also plot that out. And again, you get really good um, correlation down here. So it says you don't have to worry about the full butler volmer equation as long as you're kind of looking at, um, I want to say relatively quite large over potentials, um, then you can just use the sort of simplified versions. So I want to say what, what's the implications of all of this? And the implications of all of this are this, that um, if we look at the um, equation, you know, we have current is proportional to essentially the anodic current. Um, um, it's the net of the anodic and cathodic current. So this is cathodic, this is anodic. Um, if we plot them all out and we have a alpha of 0 0.5, then everything is quite symmetric. So alpha is quite a useful term, actually, because it tells us, you know, what's the sort of symmetry of this redox process if i shift the symmetry with an alpha of say 0 0.2 what it does is it really shows you that in fact this um redox reaction actually prefers um shows greater current in the um anodic or oxidation let's say direction here whereas if i shift the potential um sorry not potential but alpha to 0 0.8 um, it really um, favours the reduction. So alpha is a kind of useful metric because it kind of tells you the propensity to which this reaction is um, actually going. Um, in uh, things like batteries and capacitors, um, fuel cells, solar cells, I could see that alpha is actually quite a useful term to actually um, know. Now I'm just going to um, jump slightly now into the... Um, Taffel plot. So we'd started off with the Taffel equation and said, well, actually, the Taffel equation is a good approximation for the butler volmer equation, just different origins. But people do use Taffel plots quite a bit in various branches of electrochemistry. So if I take our um, butler volmer equation where alpha was equal to 0 0.2, I'll show you how we can come to a Taffel plot. I need to bring it up because Taffel plots are used quite a bit in electrochemistry, in corrosion science, um, etc. So I'm just going to zoom in on this um, region. So it's just the same data, but zoomed in. So we're sort of looking at the foot of a oxidation wave. And um, we're going to analyze it. We're going to analyze it in a, using a um, Taffel plot. So the first process that takes place is they reverse the axis. So I'm just going to show you that um, again. So we have here over potential and here we have current. Um, they swap the axis quite a lot. Not everyone does, but you will see this happen. And it, when you're starting with electrochemistry, it could be quite confusing, actually, that suddenly they shifted the axis. But yeah, here we have current and here we have potential. I think this is much more common. I've got a suspicion in corrosion electrochemistry than it necessarily is in other branches of electrochemistry. But the, um, the axes, have, first of all, have been shifted. The next process is actually they've logged the current. Um, so we have um, over potential here and the log <clears throat> of current here, log to the base 10. And actually the intercept then will tell you what the, um, you can from there, you can actually calculate what's called the exchange current. The exchange current is really useful because it tells you how much current you're going to theoretically get out of that um, redox reaction. And this is known as the Taffel slope. And from that, you can actually calculate that um, alpha. So what I want to do now is do a quick summary. I first of all say this video is the result of a direct question on our YouTube channel saying, can you do foot of wave analysis? Foot of wave analysis, by the way, can get a lot deeper than this. And if we have some feedback, we'll probably do deeper videos on this. But this foot of wave analysis first appeared in our videos in that cyclic voltammetry video that we did. And we just said this is a region under kinetic control. Now we can actually start understanding the parameters in that kinetic control region, which says that current is proportional to over potential. And you can just ignore theory, ignore theory and kind of go for that Taffel equation. Or actually, you could derive the 
um, butler volmer equation, which we haven't done today, but that can also happen as long as we get requests for it. Um, the butler volmer equation, when you're looking at over potentials greater than 0 0.1 or less than um, 0 0.1, you can actually use these sort of simplified butler volmer equations. And actually from there, you can, um, you can model the, um, the foot of wave quite accurately. And then you can actually do a Tafel plot and actually calculate your exchange current density, I0, and your alpha by doing a Tafel plot analysis. So what I'll do now is say um, thank you. Um, as I say, sort of like and subscribe if these videos are useful. That, that kind of feedback uh, motivates us to make sure that we do um, more videos um, in this series. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Zimmer and Peacock. Um, thank you very much. Take care.